tie the tie to the other stuff. The back yard looks like it's much in front Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone for being here and those watching on TV. Uh, Marriage report, chart as usual. Uh, just wanted to bring up uh, our officer, Sullen Trump. Uh, keep him and your him and the family in prayers. He's uh, slowly improving, but he still uh, has a long, long road ahead of him. And uh, continued support and prayers would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and just for everybody's, if you don't follow the laws of Missouri, that effective today. They passed the law that you uh, hands-free driving, so don't use your cell phones anymore. If I understand it right, for up until December, they'll just give you a warning, then after that, you get a ticket, I believe. So just in case you don't follow that, I just thought I'd try and make you all aware of that. And the other thing that's on everybody's mind, of course, is, is uh, what's going on with uh, Stonehill Highway and the, the new uh, developments up there. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to the attorney to uh, make a statement. Yeah, so I was asked to look into this, uh, the city wanting to make sure that it does its diligence and does at least what the law says with respect to this property that Learn to Live Recovery Solutions is leasing at 1055 Stonehill Highway. So there's really uh, four issues I identified here. Uh, one is if a city zoning ordinance conflicts with a state statute, which one controls. The next is whether recovering alcoholics and drug addicts are considered to be mentally or physically handicapped persons per federal housing laws. Then uh, must the city allow Learn to Live to operate in the R1 zone, even though some might characterize its activities as commercial. And then what are the restrictions, if any, that can be put on uh, a facility like this? And so, um, starting as usual with our, our own city code, because uh, we're talking about a single family zone, uh, what is a family? A family can be a group of not more than five people, excluding servants living together by joint agreement. So at first blush, you might say, well, they can go there, but then they have to limit their clients to five. But then the state statute 89020 uh, says that for purpose of any zoning law, ordinance, or code, a single family shall include any home in which eight or fewer unrelated mentally or physically handicapped persons reside, and it may also include two additional persons acting as house parents or guardians. And so uh, our ordinance uh, in the state statute don't necessarily uh, agree there. And uh, so then you look further into the law of which one controls, and uh, it's pretty well settled that the only zoning powers that cities and counties have are those granted to them by the state. And to the extent a city's zoning regulation is not consistent with or exceeds the power granted by the statute, it is a nullity. And so uh, then the law we have to look at is the eight or fewer uh, people living together with one or two uh, managers or whatever you want to call them. The next uh, issue uh, are alcoholics and drug addicts or recovering alcoholics and drug addicts considered mentally or physically handicapped persons. Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, Recovering alcohol and or drug users are considered disabled or impaired according to the Code of Federal Regulations. It goes on to uh, explain that an individual is considered disabled or mentally handicapped if their condition substantially limits one or more major life activities. Uh, and it goes on, the actual federal statute, the, the Fair Housing Act, says that not only must cities and counties uh, allow uh, certain these types of situations uh, that they have an affirmative duty 
to provide reasonable accommodations and land use and zoning rules when it's necessary to provide disabled individuals with equal opportunity in housing. And so you've got the statute that says if you have eight or fewer unrelated mentally or physically handicapped persons, then it's okay. And then you have federal law which says that recovering alcohol and drug users are considered disabled or impaired. Uh, so I would say that fits within the statute. Uh, however, I think it's worth investigating or getting confirmation from Learn to Live exactly what's going on there because the term disability, uh, according to the law, does not include current illegal use of or addiction to a controlled substance. A person has a disability only if they are no longer engaging in the illegal use of and not currently addicted to a controlled substance and that they are under rehabilitation. Um, it's my understanding that residents that learn to live are considered in recovery and I assume that they're forbidden from using drugs and alcohol while they're at this facility and that they're monitored for that, uh, but we can confirm. Uh, because it's fair for the city to make sure that we enforce those rules. Next, looking on, there's been comments and questions, some of, of my own, about uh, what, are, what about the activities that they're doing there. Uh, they're, they've got a manager, uh, there's management functions taking place, you have residents paying money to live there, and or residents that are being provided services, counseling or medication management or whatever, and isn't that a business? Uh, Courts have said no, that simply because uh, the operation of a dwelling can entail management functions, it does not change the essential character of a single family dwelling from residence to a commercial use. Um, specifically, they said maintaining records, filing accounting reports, managing, supervising, and providing care for individuals in exchange for monetary compensation are collateral or incidental to the prime purpose and function of a family housekeeping unit. And bottom line is these activities do not change the residential nature of the home. Uh, so in other words, no, they don't have to go to commercial. And uh, in Gregory, the State Department of Mental Health, they said they wouldn't have to get a business license because they're not a business. It's a residential facility. Uh, they likened it to somebody who uh, is a long-term property, uh, rental property owner and they get a traditional family, let's say, renting their property, uh, that owner may employ a manager, uh, a housekeeper, a gardener, uh, somebody to do the accounting for that house, uh, and that's, that doesn't mean that that's a commercial property, not a, not a residential property, because the people in the house are still using it for a residential use. Um, and then finally, the city may impose restrictions. Um, the Missouri statute itself that I cited earlier says that we do have the authority to require that the exterior appearance of the house be in reasonable conformance with the general neighborhood standards. Uh, and uh, the city may establish standards regarding the density of group homes in any neighborhood. And so, uh, it has to continue to look like a house and in keeping with the neighborhood. Uh, an example, this is just my example, I don't know, if you've got seven or eight or nine people living there and you've got seven or eight or nine cars that have to park, maybe they'll say, well, we'll just concrete the whole front yard and paint yellow stripes and put stops and, and all this. Uh, I would respectfully say, well, no, you can't do that or you shouldn't do that because that will make it look like a dentist's office or an accountant's office or something like that. It makes it look, it doesn't look like a house uh, or a residence uh, if you do that. Um, and I think, you know, they shouldn't have a, necessarily a big sign in the front yard or, or lighting that might be considered more commercial lighting. Generally, somebody should be able to drive by there and not tell, you know, that this is not just your typical house. Um, and of course, the city uh, has all of its other ordinances regarding setbacks, yard size, uh, accessory buildings, landmarks, preservation, and on and on, that they would still be uh, 
subject. So I guess in conclusion, I think when looking at this property, we need to look at the state statute. Are there eight or less people living there, plus one or two uh, house parents, or whatever they call them? Uh, and the city can look at uh, limiting the number of these types of group homes in the neighborhood and making sure that they don't change the neighborhood as far as the looks. Okay. Thank you. All right. We will move on to uh, city administrative report, please. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding the Fring Creek Bridge rehab, um, that'll be happening um, next summer. MoDOT has reached out to me. They want to schedule a public outreach meeting. Um, they've asked to hold it here at City Hall, and it's going to be September 19th, 2023. It's a meeting just for them. Um, it starts at 4.30, and it'll go to 6.30 or 7. They'll, they'll let me know for sure as that gets closer. But it'll be kind of a, it's not going to be a two-hour long meeting, but come and go and ask your questions, that sort of environment. So September 19th, 2023, and we'll help them push out that information when it gets a little bit closer. If you've driven by on East 5th Street, you've probably seen that the um, parking lot that we've been talking about, the, the flood buyout lot we're turning into a parking lot, is um, underway. Uh, our guys, some equipment broke down on another project they were doing, so it diverted their attention to uh, work on the parking lot. So they have it leveled and the gravel is poured, and our in-house street crew will be pouring a new sidewalk. And then that should be on um, before schedule, get them before schedule because we had said Oktoberfest. The last meeting we approved the funding resolution for the TAP grant for the sidewalks and we were able to get all the engineering completed and all the documentation and get that submitted in a timely manner. Um, it will be awarded, uh, should we get it, it will be awarded, they'll announce that in October and the funding will be released in 24-25. The potential flood route grant and funding that we've been looking for um, for those streets. Um, MRPC and the engineers kind of have a, a new approach for that. They suggest that we apply for a, a TEEP grant, which is a Traffic Engineering Assistance Program grant. To go ahead and, because it's going to require a lot of engineering to, um, especially on East, excuse me, West 5th Street, where it goes around the bluff up there before it comes around and meets 6th Street again. So this would be a grant for the engineering itself. And then at least we will have that portion done and we'll be in a really better position to react to these grants as they become available. Um, so that's what they've suggested and I think that's a good, um, a good plan. So that's an 80-20 grant up to $12,000. The foundation repairs, we also approved that at our last meeting, and I do have that work nailed down. Um, it's scheduled for November 1 through 3. I hope to be a little bit earlier, but um, it's our schedule that put it back that far because of all the rentals and activities we have going on over there. So um, November 1st through 3rd will be the work. We need a couple days on each side of that for prep and for cleaning. And then um, myself and the department managers will be conducting annual employee evaluations over the next month. And um, wanted to give um, a shout out to the Public Works and Parks Department that uh, last week during all that heat they were out there uh, working. Um, we did try to get them indoors as much as possible to do some training and uh, videos and things like that. But they were out there during the rent of it and I want to thank them for that. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Citizens, public comments, Mr. Brown. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Brad Brown. I live up on Stone Hill Highway. I was here two weeks ago at the board meeting with a petition signed by 13 property owners up on Stone Hill Highway that I gave to all of you, requesting that you enforce the ordinances as they are now written, uh, pertaining to the R1 single family zoning areas which require a single family, owner occupied, and a parking spot off street for each bedroom in the house. Um, <clears throat> currently, if you let Learn to Live move in there, they do not meet 
any of those requirements, aside from what the attorney just presented. Um, and I really, we really wanted to be on the agenda tonight so that these 13 property owners could be here to discuss this issue um, and, you know, go over these different points that, that he's brought out and that the uh, memorandum's brought out. Um, you know, I read through the memorandum. It says the city has to give somebody like this reasonable accommodation. Now, we have an R3 zone that would allow this type of operation. I'm going to call it a business. It's not a 501c3 tax-free entity. Um, <clears throat> they can operate in an R3 zone the way our current uh, ordinances are written. Now, I call that, you know, reasonable accommodation. Um, so I, I don't know why we just don't approach them and say, hey, we've got areas in town zoned for your kind of business. You're welcome to go there. Uh, but I do know the rest of us, and certainly me, um, are determined to take this as far as we need to to get it settled in our favor. Um, it's fine that we have these state laws and federal laws and all this written, uh, but those laws can be challenged. And when reasonable arguments went over, they're changed. Otherwise, Roe v. Wade would still be the law of the land, and it's not. And it was in place for 50 years. Now, personally, and maybe I shouldn't get into this, but recovering alcoholics to me, you know, they don't have a disease in my book. Um, they're not, you know, in a wheelchair. They're not handicapped. Um, I, and I don't know who came up with the fact that they considered these people handicapped or, or diseased. But <clears throat> I certainly think some of these arguments could be made and probably overturned at the state level and possibly the federal. Um, but I know I'm willing to take it up the chain and see how far we get. So, and I think the other owners on the street feel the same way. So, we'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> we'll move on to uh, any old business. How about those KB69 lines? Are we any further on that? <laughs> Sorry, I have to keep asking. I have to apologize for asking. Yeah. You know, things are still kind of at a standstill. Um, I know Jesse was wanting to schedule a meeting with um, one of those entities, but I don't think that's happened yet. If everybody would just be team players, it would go way through. Any other old business? Any new business? I got one of those too. Okay. Okay. I had someone approach me asking if we could have an ordinance have to look into all this to have UTVs allowed to be driving through town. They say Washington, Rosebud, Owensville, and New Haven have them, and the county has them, and you have to have a driver's license and proof of insurance, and I think it's $15 to get one, but they're wondering why we can't have that in Herman. I mean, we have our ordinance that says all terrain vehicles are prohibited, but a lot of people drive them now. A lot of people live out of town, come into town, so. Did we kind of tackle that a little bit when um, the pedal pub? No, that was a commercial. She's that was commercial. She's thing. talking about uh, Just people. That just are. private. I think the chief might be able to enlighten us. It's, I don't think they have been allowed in years past. No, not until recently they are allowed to drive like those, but I don't Things like that. I mean, they can't drive on state highways and they can cross the state highway, city streets, or county roads, or they can't be up and down 19 or 100 driving ATVs or golf carts. Or so they can't even drive them down 19 through town? No, it's a state highway. I mean, they can cross over. They can just cross. So, not to put on the spot or anything, but can you think of any other problems that might ensue if we um, legalize them driving on our city streets, or would that be, you don't see, or would there not be any issues? The uh, only issue I can see is parking. I mean, if people start driving these all over and they start going downtown and parking the already limited, and you've got ATVs and golf carts sitting around everywhere. Because I've had somebody bring that up to me before as well. Well, do these have stoplights and turn signals and brake lights? And not all of them. I don't think. The ones I mean, golf course not, so the ATVs and stuff might put all of them. I think they just put a slow-moving vehicle thing on it and it kind of... They're cycling on the back side, but they don't usually 
come with a, a lead golf carts from Oktoberfest and they have headlights and tail lights. And that's about it. The little signals are, it has a horn. But How does Washington do it? I, I don't know. I just know. They've got 47 going through there. I haven't read the ordinance. There's more of them going around downtown. There always was, like during the fair and festivals and things like that. Uh, but personally, I've wondered how you can allow them on the streets without the turn signals and the brake lights and the this and that. Then why, why should I get a ticket for an inoperable brake light if they can drive one of those? But it's probably legal. We, we can look into it. In the past, we've had people handicapped or issues that they've allowed them to just driving with a uh, certain plaque on the back. It was years ago that I had because of medical condition, you couldn't actually drive a vehicle. And that he was able to go to the gas station or you know, save a lot, never go back home, but just up and down through town and around, just have golf carts or ATVs. And I don't see what reason for it. But. And they weren't talking about golf carts, they were talking more about the, I guess, are they side by sides or side UTVs? Side. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I just don't see the but they're smaller than cars and big F-150. So I've heard part yeah. of the issues with the with side by sides of four wheelers is the tires that usually on them. They're constructed to dig into the dirt for traction. And if they operate on our asphalt, guess what they're going to do? They're going to dig into the asphalt. I think that would be a big concern also. And Dave, I guess you want to look into yeah. uh, what Washington does and maybe come back with... Provide an example and talk about it. Then we can talk about it in the future, bring it up again uh, under open. 40, 40 cc <clears throat> fall into that category too, with the, like the mopeds and stuff. Mopeds and motorbikes are 50 cc and less. They're just treated like motorized bikes. You don't right. have to have a license and such, but above that you do. Okay, any other new business? We'll move on to ordinances. All right, the first, which is on for second reading, is Bill number 2023-25, an ordinance setting the 2023 annual rates of levy for ad valorem taxes for general municipal purposes Establishment and maintenance of free public parks and municipal land purposes. Any discussion? If not, do I have a motion to approve? Second read. I'll move to approve Bill Number 2023-25, Second Read. Motion made. Do I have a second? So I'll second. Motion made. And second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next is Bill Number 2023-27 for second reading. An ordinance enacting a new article in the Code of Ordinances of the City of Herman, Missouri regarding the city's compost site. Any questions? Is there discussion on that? If not, do I have a motion to approve second read? I'll make motion Bill 2023-27, second read. Motion is made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion is made and second on paper. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. We will move on to motions. I have a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting. I move to approve the August 14, 2023 minutes. Motion is made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Carry. Motion for invoices for payment. I move that we pay the bills. I have a motion to pay the bills. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? The bills will be paid. Vehicle for Hire Renewal, Deerberg Education Foundation. I have a motion to approve. Make motion to approve. Vehicle for Hire license application. Motion been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Caterer Sprint permit for Jacob Rigger and Company Smoke Fest 2023, the amphitheater, September 16th, 2023. Move approved. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Caterer's permit for Herman of 
We incorporated Herman Harvest Festival Amphitheater, September 30th, 2023. We have a motion. Do approve. I'll move to approve. Motion made, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Gators permit for Fernwell Distilling Company Smoke Fest 2023 at the Amphitheater, September 16, 2023. I move to approve. Motion is made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Special event application for Lionheart Whiskey Company, Germantown Jams Concert Amphitheater with requested Fifth Street closure along the amphitheater on September 23rd, 2023. I have a motion for that. I move to approve. Motion is made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Special event application for Lionheart Whiskey Company, Lionheart X Chariot Motorcycle Show, Riverfront Park, September 10th, 2023. Motion approved. Motion is made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Special event application for the hip. The Herman Pickleballers Pickleball Tournament at the Tennis Courts and Pavilion, September 23rd and 24th, 2023. I move to approve. I have a motion to, to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Festival event vendor application for Odin Roasted Almonds for Hermanoff Incorporated October 7th, 8th, 14th, 15th, 21st, 22nd, 28th, and 29th, 2023. Motion to approve. I'll move that we approve those delicious almonds. And motion is made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second on February. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Any opposed? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Well, Wait, we got to add this one. I'm sorry. It's all right. Thank you. I don't know. I had it covered up. Oh, sorry. We have a temporary, temporary liquor caterers for me for uh, Rocky Top Enterprises doing business, Copper Mule Distillery for the Smoke Fest 916-23 at the Amphitheater. And a motion. Motion made or a second? Second. Motion made and second on favor, right? Aye. Any opposed? Now may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion made, do I have a second? Second. second. Motion made, second on favor, right? All right. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you for watching and thank you for coming. Good evening. Do you want them back? Then we're here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.